we're gonna be going through my recommendations to secure your iPad, to make it harder to crack, to make it harder to hack. You've got Bluetooth running on your iPad. Bluetooth is going hello out to the world, letting everybody that's on Bluetooth that you are there. So we're gonna be showing you good practices to secure and harden your iPad. So we'll go from number 10 down to number one on our iPad. Starting off with the whole password, face ID, touch ID. If your iPad falls into the wrong hands, if it's stolen, if it's lost, it's hard for somebody to get in, spy on it, get data off it. Opening up our settings right over here, we are going to scroll down to the bottom area there that says touch ID and passcode. Now this section will only be valid for specific sorts of iPads. If your iPad has got face ID, great. You can use face ID if your iPad has the fingerprint thing on the little side. And you can also use combinations of that along with a complex passcode. In my case, I've got a touch ID available on here. So I'm gonna select that I want all of the stuff that is listed right on there to be using my Touch ID. You can use Face ID. Record your face multiple times so that your face is the code that is gonna be used on your particular iPad. The passcode, if you don't have one, you need to go and turn it on. Turn passcode on over here. Now you can put in your standard five digit passcode on here or you can go into passcode options and make it a lot more difficult. Do a custom alphanumeric code, make it really, really hard so that it's really, really hard for somebody to get in. Once your passcode is set, require password immediately, do that. Now here's one other thing, is when your iPad is locked, you'll actually see that there's stuff that is visible on your iPad lock screen. Do you actually want that stuff to be visible on your iPad lock screen? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you want it to be as clean as possible so that nobody can just see your reminders and maybe things that you've got coming up, go and switch some of that stuff off so that they are not visible on your lock screen. Now the iPad of course comes in two different sorts of flavors. One is the one that allows you to throw in a SIM card and you can actually get 4G, 5G coverage and the other one is one that doesn't have that and only allows you to do like a Wi-Fi sort of connection. This one covers a few things. It covers turning off your mobile data, it covers turning off or reviewing your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi. If your iPad has Bluetooth turned on, it's literally going to the whole world, hello, I am here, scan me on my Bluetooth frequency. Same deal with Wi-Fi, same deal with your cell towers that will sort of know where you are if you are using data and it's communicating with a cell phone tower. So Wi-Fi, for example, we go into here, you'll see I'm connected here to a Wi-Fi network. Here's a number of other Wi-Fi networks that I've got available. Only connect to Wi-Fi networks that you trust. If you're not gonna use it, go and forget that Wi-Fi network, don't actually use it. But ultimately, if you wanna stay protected, if you wanna stay secure, if you wanna make sure that nobody is snooping, turn that Wi-Fi off like that. Bluetooth, the same deal. If you're not gonna be using Bluetooth, you see I've got a few devices right in here. If you don't need Bluetooth, turn your Bluetooth off. And then if you've got mobile data, go and turn that off as well. Essentially, the less things that you've got switched on, the less your iPad is out in the world, letting everybody and other devices that may be looking around these frequencies from you being discovered. We are now gonna be looking at controlling some stuff around your location services. We're gonna go down to where it says privacy. You see the little hand right there. You're telling the world your location. Sounds pretty scary, and it is. So you may wanna go and limit that. By default, you can switch location services off altogether. Just turn that puppy off altogether, and that will disable it across every single app on your iPad. Now that may be fine for you and you may want to do that and that is good. If you want to do that all together, go ahead and turn it off all together. But if you want to be very, very specific, you'll actually notice that here is a list of all of the applications and some services that your iPad is using. You can go and actually select these specific apps that you may not want to be tracking your location. So for example, here I've got a 7 plus app or you'll see that it says while using, it's going to be telling that application my location, and then the people who look after that application potentially will know my location. So you could actually say never altogether. That way so you can be very, very specific by selecting only the ones that are relevant for you. But if you wanna be even more protected, go and switch it off all together. Then there's stuff around information that you are giving out to apps, to Apple, 
and stuff around tracking that you wanna maybe be looking at reducing. Right underneath that location services in the same privacy space, you've got this thing called tracking. We're gonna click on tracking. Do you wanna allow apps to request to track? You go and download an app off the app store. Great, you open it up and then it says, do you allow this application to track you? That's what that is. If you don't want that feature, which you probably don't, why do you want an app to track you? Go and turn that off. Do you want to ask apps previously allowed to track to stop tracking? Well, if you've already had that on for a while and you don't want it to happen, go and switch it off for everything. Before we scroll into the very bottom and we show you the next little section, go and check all these things out. Whole heap of individual settings right in here that you may want to look at controlling. If I go into Bluetooth, here are the apps that are using my Bluetooth that will be using Bluetooth for that application. It's a little bit of privacy. Do you actually want those apps to be doing that thing? What about my camera? Well, there you go, Microsoft Teams. It's a great app for video stuff, but it's using my camera. Do you want it to use your camera? Maybe you don't, you can turn that off. Down the bottom, two main areas, analytics and improvement. What is this that you ask? Well, do you wanna share your iPad analytics? Do you wanna share the stats of your iPad with other people? Help Apple improve, as it says right there, improve its products and services by automatically sending daily diagnostics and usage data. So daily, this is gonna be potentially sending Apple information about your iPad, information about how you're using your iPad, how you're using the applications on your iPad. I mean, Apple will say, we wanna learn because that way we can get better. And there's possibly some truth to that, but do you really wanna be sending all that information? If you don't, go and switch that sucker off. Now that was with Apple, but then look at down below, you've got share with app developers, improve Siri dictation, share iCloud analytics. So if you've got some of those other ones turned on, maybe turn them off. But here's another scary thing, click on analytics data, and there's a summary of every single thing that has been getting captured on your iPad every single day. Scary stuff. Apple advertising, do you have this feature on in your area, depending on where you live? Do you actually want Apple to be sending you personalized ads? That may not seem like a big deal, but really what's happening right there is Apple are sending you personalized apps. How do they know things about you? Well, it's all based on all of the information that you've been giving Apple. So if you don't want that, switch that off. Siri, do you like Siri? Siri can be really good, very, very helpful. Can also be a little bit annoying from time to time, but also Siri's always listening. You wanna protect your iPad? Perhaps look at limiting what Siri can actually do. We're gonna scroll down. Over to here, Siri and search right down the middle. Listen for Hey Siri. Do you really want that on? That means it's always listening. It's always listening. It's waiting for that command. But is it tracking other things that you're saying? Apple says no, but eh, I'd be a bit more cautious and maybe look at switching Hey Siri off. Safari and browser control. So you've got your web browser. Safari being the big one, you could probably use Google, you can use Firefox, you can use others. But uh, let's look at Safari and really in any browser, you can actually go and set specific controls to stop that browser from tracking, from spying, from getting information uh, that is relevant to you and your searches, which you probably don't want to uh, be displaying. So we're gonna scroll down to Safari, which of course, if you've got another browser, you go to the settings of that particular browser. And right in here, you can see some stuff, including Safari and search. You can allow Safari to access Siri. There's some settings in here, of course, that you can do, but down the very bottom, there's this whole section around privacy and security. Do you wanna prevent cross-site tracking? Uh, probably yes, you wanna turn that on. What about fraudulent website warnings? Yeah, you wanna turn that on. Let's leave all those on. Block all cookies. What's a cookie? Well, a cookie tracks some information. It saves some information about your search so that the next time you're gonna go and search for that particular thing, it sort of remembers it and makes the whole experience a little bit better. But that does require a cookie being saved on that website about you and about your, you know, the, the way that you interacted with the website. Straight away, let's go and switch that on. And we wanna block all cookies. Are you sure you wanna do it? Yes, we're sure because we wanna stay secure on our iPad. And you also wanna be hiding your IP address. If you don't have that switched on, if it's set to off, go and switch that on. Number four is VPN, virtual private network. Crypt all your traffic when you are surfing the interwebs out on your iPad. It's probably a good thing to do, not just the internet, but any sort of web traffic, any data that is flowing in and out. We're focusing here, of course, on the iPad, 
but I'd recommend using a VPN on your phone, on your computer, wherever you can, especially if you're gonna be going to a public space. Let's say you take your iPad down to a hotel or to an airport or to a McDonald's, you're connecting to that guest Wi-Fi network, you wanna probably be ensuring a encrypted secure connection because the reality is that a hotel, you go to a dodgy hotel, you connect to their dodgy Wi-Fi, and then some dodgy hotel manager all of a sudden has access to be able to see some data or interact with your iPad a little bit because their Wi-Fi connection is being snooped upon. You don't wanna be in that state. So to ensure that you are protected, get yourself a VPN. You can go and get some free ones. Free ones, of course, they're gonna have some limitations, but go and buy a VPN. It's a small little monthly fee. They give you a VPN so that when you're connecting to anything out on the internet, you're connecting over this VPN and it is a lot more secure than if you're not using a VPN. So go down into the general area and scroll down to VPN and device management. So you wanna go and create a VPN configuration, all right? In here, you wanna use IPsec, you wanna use L2TP, you can select the relevant one, but let's just go IPsec, for example. It's then gonna ask you for a whole bunch of details around the description. Your server will be the details that your VPN provider gives you the account, the password, all of that sort of stuff. As long as you've got an internet connection on your iPad, you've got your Wi-Fi or your, you know, or your cell data, you're then forming an encrypted virtual private network from you to your VPN provider. Of course, the iPad is running iOS. From time to time, people are gonna find exploits. They're gonna find vulnerabilities. So then what happens is the vendor, which is Apple, will then go and release updates. Pretty important that you listen to that and update your iPad. Some people will say, I don't want to update my iPad because it'll make it slower and it just, I don't want to do that. The reality is Apple and any other vendor, right? Any other application that you've got on your iPad, like I've got a whole bunch of apps on here, right? Every one of these apps is made by somebody, is made by a team of developers. And sometimes those apps have vulnerabilities, they have risks, and you want to make sure that you are keeping these up to date. Here we are, general. We're gonna go into software update. I'm gonna leave updates on. I think it's pretty good to have. And there you go. Right here, there's a new iPad OS version 16.3.1. Download it, install it, but also do it for your applications. So you go into settings, go down to the app store section right here, ensuring that under automatic downloads, you've got app updates is ticked on and it'll automatically do that whole thing for you. You don't have to worry and you're ensuring that you're securing some stuff there. Now, we come into number two. We've already covered a lot of stuff. We've already shown you some of the things that you can be turning off, some things that you could be limiting, good practices that you could be putting in place. If you can limit all of the stuff when you're not needing some of these features, airplane mode, flight mode, switching it on when you can and turn it on right there. That's just automatically gone and switched off a whole bunch of stuff for me. The number one thing that I'd probably recommend, so maybe uh, look at limiting or signing out of iCloud. iCloud is very, very helpful. You can use it to sync up all of your Apple apps. You've got iCloud storage. If you've got an iPhone, if you've got a Mac, you can just get the thing to work really good. Find your device if it's lost, if it's stolen. You can remotely wipe your device. It's actually really, really good. But also iCloud keeps a lot of information about you, keeps a lot of information about your device and your iPad. In that settings area, you're gonna click on that, your smiley face at the very top. Whole heap of information in here that you can go and set up, including your password and security. Making sure that of course your password is super long, super secure, turning two-factor authentication on. I mean, this is one thing that a lot of people have not set up. Media and purchases will allow you to go and customize some stuff around you buying apps and, and tracking information as well around your app usage and what sort of apps you like. Find My, well, you may want to use that if you want to be able to track your iPad, but then that also means that other people could potentially track your iPad if they get into your iCloud. And if you want to be ultimately secure, as I said at the start, go and sign out altogether. And that way you'll ensure that you're a lot more secure and your iPad isn't spied on as easily. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you found this helpful. We'll see you next time.